This is Matthew Cratter from Trade University, and today I want to answer the question, could an EMP attack destroy Bitcoin? This is a question I've been getting from a lot of you, including Nikoni or Nick14129. An EMP attack is basically stands for electromagnetic pulse attack, and the kind we would be worried about would be a nuclear EMP. This is where someone, maybe a terrorist, a rogue nation state, or even one of our fiat overlords who wants to do a false flag attack or really cause a lot of destruction, this is when someone explodes a nuclear device, a nuclear bomb, very high up in the atmosphere above a country or above a continent. And the thing about this is this does not require precise location targeting like trying to nuke a city. So it's definitely within the reach of more actors than you might imagine. So you, you explode this nuclear device, it creates a, an electromagnetic pulse. And this EMP, this electromagnetic pulse, is not that dangerous to the human body. But the problem is, and this is where it causes the real damage, is it fries your electronics. It will fry all semiconductors that it encounters, especially if it is strong enough. Now, because we live in a modern world that is so heavily dependent on semiconductors, this has a lot of very, very terrible knock-on effects. And I would say if you're squeamish and you don't like contemplating doomsday apocalyptic scenarios, you should really stop watching the video right now uh, because what's going to follow will give some people uh, will give some people nightmares. So what happens when all the semiconductors get fried in a country or a continent? The power grid goes down, so there's no electricity. Natural gas and water stop flowing to the extent that your utilities rely on chips for all their pumps and for all their monitoring stations. No more heating or AC in your house unless you happen to have a wood stove. Public sewer pumps will stop working, and there's a very good chance that the toilets will back up and start to overflow in your house, especially if you're in an apartment building in a major city. Solar panels will get fried, so you won't be able to generate electricity from them. No internet, no cell phone service, hospital equipment stops working, ATM machines stop working, you can't log into your bank account, banks close because they're unable to process withdrawals uh, because all of their computers are down, delivery trucks stop working, so grocery stores run out of food and supplies, and your car, to the extent it has semiconductors in it, and if it's post call it 1985 or 1990, it certainly has a lot of chips in it, your car will not start even if you have gas in it. Gas stations will obviously empty out very quickly. The pumps will probably stop working as well to the extent they have electronics in them. Within a few days after an EMP attack, you can expect roving bands of starving people trying to break into people's houses to get food or water. And especially when people are desperate or they have children to feed, they can get very desperate. Indeed, you can see things like cannibalism. I'm not really going to elaborate, but this is really a modern example of a real life zombie apocalypse. If you're enjoying this video so far and that list of terrible things hasn't scared you, off, scared you off, I just ask you to help support the channel by clicking that like and subscribe button. Now it could take years or even decades to recover from something like this, especially since so many chips are still made in Asia and an EMP attack will probably disable these chip factories as well, whether they're in Texas or in Taiwan or wherever they are. So this is a very, very slow process to rebuild from. If you live in a city, you are probably doomed. You are probably in very, very big trouble unless you can get out of that city on your bicycle really, really quickly. If you live in a remote rural area, you might survive assuming you have a garden, some stocked up food supplies, a manual pump uh, in your well. You don't want some electric or electrical pump that might be disabled. And if you have a wood stove, for example, if you live in a cold climate, unless of course the roving mobs of zombies from the nearest big city come to your property. So when you're picking a property like this, you don't want to be right on the outskirts. You have to think of what desperate people and mobs of people will do. They can probably cover a lot of territory in a few days looking for food. Now, is this entire scenario real or is it completely made up? It's actually real. The Wall Street Journal published an opinion piece back in 2014 by James Woolsey, who certainly knows what he's talking about when it comes to things like this. The growing threat from an EMP attack, a nuclear device detonated above the US could kill millions, and we've done almost nothing to prepare. I would assume we're still completely unprepared in 2023 for something like this. There was actually an example of this with uh, Starfish Prime, which was a nuclear test that the US carried out in 1962 in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. This was a high altitude nuclear explosion, but it had the effect of causing a lot of electrical damage in Hawaii, which was approximately 900 miles or 14, 1500 kilometers away, disabling streetlights, triggering numerous burglar alarms, and damaging a microwave link. Here's another article I'll link to about how one atmospheric nuclear explosion could take out 
the power grid. And it's not just nukes that could do this. We could also have some sun flare, solar flare activity, a coronal mass ejection could do this as well. This actually happened in 1859 during the Carrington event, which was a strong geomagnetic storm that disrupted and even caused fires in multiple telegraph stations. And so you can imagine what this would do to the modern world, which really hasn't experienced a, a Carrington event like thing since the advent of the computer age. But given how dependent we are in the internet and how dependent we are on global communication networks, this could definitely be quite devastating. So how do you prepare for an EMP attack? It's a good idea to have a garden, chickens, cows, goats, to the extent that you're able to do that, a supply of canned food or other stored preserved food, a well or water source that doesn't rely on an electric pump or an electronic pump, a remote land location that's far away from major metro, metro areas, as we said, good neighbors that you can trust and you're all aligned, tools of self-defense, which you know what I'm talking about, and probably a horse or a bicycle, given that you won't be able to use your car or truck if you need to cover some territory. You'll also want to have your Bitcoin backup, your recovery seed, whether it's 12 words or 24 words, you're going to want to have this on a metal plate or paper. It's also a good idea to have a Faraday cage or a shield or a Faraday bag for your phone, your computer, hardware, wallet, etc. This will protect them from the from the EMP. And I'd ask you if you're familiar with this and you've thought through these scenarios, please add your other suggestions in the comment section below. I'm sure I'm missing out on a lot. Here's an article linked to about Faraday cages and Faraday shields as well. Now in a Mad Max apocalyptic scenario like this, we would expect various other things to be to be essentially remonetized, these sort of physical forms of physical money like bottles of alcohol, cigarettes, tools of self-defense, ammo, for example, canned food, gold, or silver coins. This is an argument you often hear against Bitcoin from gold bugs. Here's one from JB Falky, 4902. Gold can't be destroyed by a coordinated EMP attack, but Bitcoin's nodes could be very easily wiped out enough to collapse the whole thing. So this is a, a common gold bug argument against Bitcoin. What good is your Bitcoin if the global internet goes down and stays down? Gold, by contrast, physical gold, not paper gold, cannot be crippled by an EMP attack or a huge internet outage. And I would say that's true because it's actually a shiny yellow rock. Your, I would say that your tools of self-defense also cannot be damaged by an EMP attack. I don't think most tools of self-defense will be. And they might be more effective against an attacker looking for food or water rather than throwing a shiny yellow rock or bar at him. It's important though to make sure that your vault or safe that contains these tools of self-defense doesn't have semiconductors in the door or the opening mechanism that could get fried and prevent you from opening the safe. It's much better to have a very manual safe. An EMP attack will probably lead directly not to a new gold standard, but as the joke is, rather to a lead standard. So what happens to Bitcoin in an environment like this? If North America goes dark as the result of a massive EMP attack, you would expect Bitcoin miners and nodes in other parts of the world to keep working. The good news is no one can spend your Bitcoin while North America is online. If you're in North America, there's nothing, there's no way anyone can steal your Bitcoin unless they have your private keys somehow. So your Bitcoin will remain on chain and protected. And then when North America comes back online, nodes in that area will begin to follow the longest Bitcoin blockchain, i.e. the one with the most accumulated proof of work, and everything will get back to normal when the electricity and the internet come back up. Side note, under proof of stake, there's no good way to determine which of multiple blockchains is the valid one. This is another major problem with proof of stake. In a scenario like this, you'd have to let Vitalik Buterin or Joe Lubin decide which is the canonical chain. Whereas with Bitcoin, it's the longest chain. It's the chain with the most accumulated proof of work and there's no subjective measurement that needs to be made. This is a real advantage of proof of work. Now, what happens if the global internet goes down, not just North America, but the entire world? Obviously in this situation, activity on the Bitcoin blockchain will pause. Many people will try to preserve a snapshot of the current UTXO set. This is just a list of Bitcoin addresses and how much unspent Bitcoin each one holds. And people will preserve a snapshot of this on their node or in a Faraday bag backup. If and when the electricity and internet can come back on, the Bitcoin network can start running again, beginning with that snapshot of what the UTXO set, in other words, the ownership set, looked like right before the power went off. Important point, Bitcoin does not get destroyed or disappear when the electricity goes off. It just stops processing transactions on the blockchain. 
I don't see a real use case for gold in either scenario. You basically have two worlds. You have one in which the internet is up and running in most places on earth. In this case, Bitcoin is almost always better. It's more portable, easier to store, easier to verify or assay. It's more scarce than gold. It's more provably, provably scarce, etc. And if we have an apocalyptic Mad Max EMP scenario like we've been talking about in this video with no global internet and no electricity, having a few gold or silver coins might be useful for trade in your immediate area. But there are also real risks to venturing off your property with precious metals jingling in your pocket. It's probably in this situation much better to have food and water and tools of self-defense than gold or silver. Drugs like alcohol, tobacco, cannabis, medical supplies, antibiotics, Advil, etc. may acquire a temporary monetary premium in an environment like this and they could function as a medium of exchange that can also, also be used. But I think that whether the world is ending or not, I think they're probably always better things to hold than gold. The other thing to keep in mind, of course, is the Blockstream satellite, which broadcasts the Bitcoin blockchain around the world 24 seven for free. And this would be another way of using Bitcoin without the internet. It's not totally clear to me whether this would work in a scenario like this. Basically, you have these various satellites and then you have ground stations called teleports. And if enough of these teleports were, were not destroyed by an EMP, you could actually uh, have the blockchain activity continue using these various Blockstream satellites. But if all the teleports on the ground were destroyed and all their chips fried by an EMP attack, I don't think this would be possible. If you have any thoughts on EMP attacks and their effects on Bitcoin and what we can do to prepare, please stick them in the comment section below. As I said, if you found this video helpful, be sure to hit that subscribe and like button. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video and leave a comment in the comment section below. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the next video.